Hello kids, Patrick Livingston of EasyAnimalsToDraw.com and today we're going to be drawing this animal. The pointer. My own dog is half Labrador, half pointer. It looks like a black Labrador, but if you look closely, it's a little bit finer. Not quite as stocky as a Labrador. So starting with the circle for the hips, dotting it in lightly just to, to indicate the shape of the circle before drawing it in. As always, the circle doesn't have to be perfectly round. Much more important is that it's the right size and in the right place. Now the second circle for the shoulders and chest. Drawing it in lightly, first of all. It's easier to correct mistakes that way. Well, it looks like a reasonable circle, so I can go ahead and draw it in a little bit more firmly. Not too firmly, because at the end of the day it's going to be rubbed out, because it's just the, draw the drawing guide. Now the final circle, which is very similar in size to the circle for the hips, not indeed exactly the same size. So finally the circle for the head we're going to draw a line across and a second line, curved line at the front. And this will act as a guide when we come to put in the eyes and the, the nose. And finally on the head an indication triangle to guide us when we draw the ear. Now we join up the circles with curved lines and as if by magic we have the approximate shape of the body and the neck and the head. Now a pointer has quite a deep chest. They're, they're really fast runners. And in fact, they were used with coursing hounds. Hunting hares. And coursing hounds, of course, are extremely fast. So drawing in the legs, the hind leg, hind legs, and now the four legs. All we have to do is add the tail and we have a drawing guide for the pointer. Now the drawing, the main drawing. This is where the lines bisecting the the circle for the head come in useful to give you an indication as to where exactly to place the eyes. Now the nose. Now you can see why we've drawn in that line because it'll guide you as to where exactly to place the nose. Now the muzzle. The shape of the head is not so different to a Labrador. It's a little bit finer, a little bit lighter. Now the, the ear and the second ear, the ear closest to us. As you can see, it hangs down much like a Labrador's. But while a Labrador was bred to swim, essentially, the pointer was bred to, to run.
and point point at the position of the of the the quarry in the 1700s with the rise of wing shooting the pointer became a devoted and durable gun dog in pointing and retrieving game birds pointers a few peers and their fans say no dog does it better it is fun to watch a pointer pointing. It lifts its front paw up a little bit and freezes with its tail straight out behind it and its nose pointing directly at the prey. And it does this instinctively. You don't have to train it. on earth they were able to breed that into a dog is a mystery to me. So we're drawing the front leg and notice how long the legs are compared to the average dog. Typical of a dog bred for speed but also interestingly closer to the wolf in overall proportions than the average dog because wolves have to travel long distances to find their quarry and long legs help them in that and they may go for many days without having anything to eat so a light slim body that doesn't require so much food is also a good idea and although the pointer was bred with a completely different idea in mind the result has certain similarities Pointer is a, more, is a stronger, more athletic looking animal than a wolf. wolf. Wolf is designed to, well not designed, but the wolf. A wolf can go for many days and travel very long distances in between finding something to eat. So I suppose the best way to think of a wolf, the and the reason, of course, I'm mentioning a wolf in this context is that all dogs were bred from wolves. The ancestor of all dogs, the Pointer and the Pekingese, is the wolf. It's quite astonishing how far some of the dogs have come in terms of their breeding. My favourite bit now, removing the drawing guide. It's inevitable that you will rub out some of the drawing but it will generally leave a mark where you've done the drawing and you can go back in easily and firm it up again, go over it and make it a little stronger. And as I say, the magic for me is that when the scaffolding, so to speak, the drawing guide comes away, there's something magical about the, the drawing of the dog being left behind. The drawing guide is tremendously helpful, but it's wonderful just to see the drawing without the guide at the end. If you like, you can, you can leave your drawing at this stage just as a, without shading it at all, if, if you like. Um, it's up to you. We will, of course, continue and shade in this pointer. This is a good time to correct any small mistakes you can see. As you see me doing here, the tail doesn't look quite right. And so a little bit of redrawing. And there's a mistake at the back. I'm sure you can all see it. Where the tail looks very fat. That's because it should disappear behind the hind leg. Here we go. That's better. I 
maybe I need it just a little bit thinner. Unlike the Labrador, who needs a fat, thick tail to help him swim, imagine a, a dog that's bred for speed does not really need a, a heavy tail. It's not going to help him very much to run fast. There we go. Time for the shading. Starting with the ear. And as you can see, this pointer has a, a little, a few patches of colour on its head. The coat of the pointer comes in several colours, solid or in patterns, but as the the fans of the breed like to say a good pointer can't be a bad colour. That's essentially because pointers are of interest to their owners for what they can do. I think my own dog, a mix between a Labrador and a Pointer, it's quite a good mix because the, the temperament is similar. They're both gun dogs. They're both... The temperament is an easygoing temperament. That they're, they were bred to work with people, to relate to people, and... Uh, Essentially, you could say that I've got a fast Labrador or I've got a pointer that swims well. Now the nose, shading in the nose. Remember the nose often has a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not as shiny as the eyes, but it has a little bit of a sheen. So by leaving a little bit of little pale area at the front, it, gives, it lets the viewer know in a black and white drawing and pencil drawing, that there's a certain shine to the nose, a little bit of a gloss, semi-gloss. I must find out what those little follicle markings are called on a dog where the dog has some hairs coming out each side of the muzzle. Not quite, not quite as pronounced as the whiskers on a cat. Marking the pupil a little bit and adding a little more detail to the eyes. Now some indications of the power and the muscles in the dog. You can see that a little bit from the outline. A little bit of a darker spot on the tail there. Some spots on the inside leg. You could say that the Noble Pointer is the ultimate expression of canine power and grace, and that they're the unquestioned aracrats of the sporting world. Sorry, did I say aracrats? I meant, of course, aristocrats of the sporting world. They're capable of great speed and agility. So now we're shading in the tail.
showing some of the muscles and power of the back legs and the deep chest, much like a greyhound in shape. Greyhounds also have very deep chests. Might made the far leg just a little bit too too thick at the bottom. Fix that. You notice I'm holding the pencil in a far from the tip. This helps reduce the, the pressure on the tip, making it a more sensitive instrument and allowing me to, to draw a more sensitive, paler line. You can experiment on a plain sheet of paper with this technique. Of course, it's quite easy to draw a very strong, solid line. You just grab the pencil and press down hard. It's a little bit trickier to draw a very faint, soft line, and that'll come with a little bit of practice. A little bit of practice. Of course, drawing is all about practice. It's more important to to practice than it is to get it right first time or anything like it. You know, just just. Keep at it and you'll find your drawing improving day by day. To help you with your drawing, you can head on over to easyanimalstodraw.com where you can download PDF files to help you with your drawing of the pointer. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that bell to get notifications of other videos. And uh, until next time. Bye for now.